a function of x times a function of x. That's a product rule. Then when you go through that, as you're doing that, that's the first thing you see. From the outside end, you see a product rule, right? As you're going through the product rule, it would be derivative of the first, that'd be fine, times the second, still okay, plus the first, all right, times the derivative of the second. And as soon as you get to the derivative of the second, how do you take the derivative of that thing? It's a quotient rule. You would have a quotient rule that is within the product rule. See that? So we're going to talk a lot about this, how the rules will have an interplay, which ones you do first and which ones you do second. Basically, if you can follow the DDX, follow the first rule, then follow the DDX. And wherever you have a quotient, then you use the quotient rule, or a pro then you use the product rule. We'll get there. Probably get there right now. Let's try one. <laughs> That wasn't my segue, it was a two second segue, come on. That's good for me. I have ADD apparently. I said the opposite of ADD, I focus only on math and other things. Now, we're going to do this the hard way. We're going to do the hard way because I want you to see it. But there is an easier way to do this. The easier way to do this would probably be to distribute this, combine like terms, and then use one quotient rule. Right? But I want you to see, I want you to see how the product rule will play in this. Because if I do one thing, you can't do it anymore. If I gave you like a five, well, you definitely wouldn't be distributing that anymore, right? So you better learn the other way because I'm certainly going to give you something like that. You're going to need to be able to do it. So we're going to learn how to associate the product rule with the quotient rule and use a rule within a rule right here. Now, when you look at the first rule to use, you've got to see which, one, which one's overlying, encompassing more of the problem, the product rule or the quotient rule? Quotient. The quotient rule clearly is. It says the product is actually within that quotient. Do you see it? So the first rule we're going to use is quotient rule. Let's write out the quotient rule. What is it again? Low, low, d high. Low. What says my low? Do I do anything to the low right now? Low. Then what? D high. So we're gonna do d high. Oh, yes. Low d high, and then what? Minus, minus. Okay, like the minus. Low d high minus the high. Okay. Uh, real quick, I want you to the board here real, real quick. Make sure that when you distribute this, you still have a bracket. If you distribute, you still have a bracket because that negative will ultimately change those signs. You see what I'm talking about? That's important. So you wouldn't distribute the negative now. You distribute all this and then do the negative lastly. But you need a big old bracket around that thing. Pi and then D, who? Low. All over what, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, You're saying the bracket will go um, from the high and the derivative of the second? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That thing like that. Because you distribute all that, and then the negative would go. Okay. Now, can you just stop and like, do a sidebar and then do your product rule for your. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do this right now. So, but, but I need you to understand that this is, certainly is the quotient rule for us. Are you okay with that? That, that is the quotient rule. Now you follow your DDX. Don't don't change anything much at all. This isn't gonna change. X squared plus two squared. Sure. This isn't gonna change except for that derivative. Three x minus one. X squared plus four and that would give you a times 2x. Are you okay on that DDX? This is the rough one. Do you see what this does to you? So you'd say, this is fine. x squared plus 2. Okie dokie. Got that. 
Then you follow your DDX and go, I don't have to take the derivative of this, I do have to take the derivative of this. And as soon as you do that, to see how that's like a problem within a problem. That is a product rule. The product rule says a derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. You'd get that. This one, well, we didn't change that at all. This one, we followed the DDX and just got the 2x. So I'll do this very quickly so you just get the answer uh, that I'm looking for. The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second That would be your problem. Do you see how oh, I did it really quickly? You would show your work off to the side and I should do the product rule. This is 3x squared plus 4 plus x squared, I'm sorry, sorry, 2x, the derivative of that is 2x, 3x minus 1. That's that little piece right there. So that's the, the product rule. After that, if you wanted to spend, the, I, I'd be impressed if you got down to this far, okay? That'd be fine. Um, if you want to spend the time and distribute and distribute and then distribute and then distribute, and distribute, don't forget the negative, and then combine all those like terms, you use something pretty nasty looking, but it's, it would be a, a polynomial in this case. Do you see the polynomial? Yeah, I'm not going to go that far. It's going to take me 10 minutes just to distribute everything. Do you understand the idea of the product rule working with the quotient rule? Raise your hand if you feel okay with that. All right, very good.